Okay, good morning one and all. I'm going to be making some uh, egg sandwiches, fried egg sandwiches today. I'm going to use two of my cast iron skillets. Uh, the one I've cooked on before, I showed you the first one, the first uh, egg cook on a 2020 skillet. Well, I also have my buffalo skillet that's going to be the first cook. But anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. But what I want you to know is that I changed my name on the channel, but by doing that, uh, I couldn't carry everything forward. You know, everybody that's liked my stuff and, you know, subscribed. So what I'd like you all to do is after you watch this video, please, if you haven't, go ahead and give me a like, uh, share, subscribe, and hit the bell. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop sending everybody, oh, my new videos. Uh, I'm not going to do that. So I'm hoping that you guys will do that and I'll keep making the videos. Uh, outside of that, what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to, uh, be making some fried egg sandwiches today with some mozzarella cheese, bacon, and uh, some. I'm gonna put some t bread on the skillet with some mayonnaise and brown it on one side, and we'll put the egg in that together. And then I'll make another video showing how to properly clean everything when you're done. It doesn't take much time, but it's easy. And if you do it that way, you'll maintain where you won't get no rust, and it'll always be ready to cook on when you're ready. Okay. Okay, what we have here is some mozzarella cheese, two slices of bread per plate with some mayonnaise. I've already put it on the one side of the bread. We have some uh, bacon over there, and I just wanted to show you we use Hellman's mayonnaise, the real stuff. Okay, so we're getting ready to put some butter, and I got the, the uh, cast iron heating up. I'm going to put some butter in here and get us going. I got both pans heating up. Uh, this one's for the eggs. I got my little bit of uh, olive oil and my little pat of butter. This one has nothing uh, because I'm going to put, I already put the, the cheese and the bacon on the bread. And now I'm putting the bread right in there. So hopefully this turns out good. I never did it in a cast iron skillet before. I'm trying to use cast iron more and more. So, and this is like a treat for me and Penny today because uh, we hardly ever eat bread because that has points to it. And you know, points with uh, Weight Watchers, that's not good, so. But at any rate, uh, she doesn't like a runny yolk, so I'll be busting that here in a couple seconds. A little salt and pepper. She'll say, I got too much salt there. Whatever. And I just want to hopefully get to show you guys, like, this is properly seasoned. I haven't cooked in it since the other day when I showed you the first video of us doing the first cook of this pan, the first egg cook, and nothing was sticking. Uh, and if you season it well and you keep it nice and clean, and uh, it'll, it'll be ready to go every time you are. <laughs> That's the truth. Um, I got a bunch of old pots back there, uh, skillets, uh, BSR, uh, Wagner, and everybody's favorite, the Griswold. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to collect them, but it's taking time, especially now with no, uh, I'm going to turn this up. This one burner never wants to cook nothing. <laughs> it's going to be a pain in the tush. So, but I got the egg going here. And uh, that'll probably get done before the bread, so I'm going to slide that off onto a dish. I think this is ready to flip. Look at that, huh? No stick. Got a little yolk around there, but that'll come up. <coughs> but this will all turn out pretty good, I, I hope. 
If, if you ever seen when you put mayonnaise on the on the bread and you toast it in the pan like this, like making a grilled cheese, that comes out such nice golden brown on one side. It, it's uh, complete. It's completely different than the butter. When you put butter on it, the mayonnaise does make a difference. So there you go. Just trying to make sure the yolk is done for penny. So. Just like the last time, I'm not going to put no more grease or anything in there. I'm just going to cook the next egg just with what's in here. And that's saying something for a cast iron skillet, really. Like I said, once you, uh, once you uh, have everything seasoned right, it'll work wonders. All right, hold on. Okay, so... I think this is about done. So you see what that looks like? The cheese is melted. Wait a minute. <laughs> I ain't dropping this on the floor. The dog will have a mayday. There you go. The cheese is melted. The bacon's ready. I'm gonna get that egg. Plop it right down on top of that bacon and cheese. Help it melt a little more. And have it. Move this off to the side for right now. But I didn't use no grease in that pan because the mayonnaise has you know oil in it, so it turned out pretty good. Alright, I'm getting ready to cook the next egg until then. Hold on. Okay, and we're back. I had to deliver the sandwich to Miss Penny. She's in the back working. Now both mayonnaise side down. I'm gonna crack an egg. Yeah, I've been practicing cracking eggs with one hand. <laughs> That's a joke. Uh. <laughs> I'll tell you, I don't know how them guys do it, but I'm gonna keep trying until I get it right. The other one I want to work on is flipping, you know, but these things are heavy. Uh, I read somewhere that uh, you want to learn how to flip, you uh, take a piece of toast, put it in a flat pan like this, and walk around all day till you get the hang of it. They said it doesn't take very long, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm going to try it one day, though. But as you can see, I didn't put nothing else in here but what we did the first time, just like the first time I cooked uh, in this pan. This is that uh, 2020 pan. This one is a buffalo nickel head pan on the bottom. I'll show you that later when we're cleaning up. Yeah. See, that's what I like about the cast iron. Earlier it wasn't heated up enough, but now, because the heat's in there, but this retains the heat for a while, so that's a good thing. So let me cook them things a little quicker. And I think I'm going to bust this yolk. <laughs> Not that I want it to. I'm going to turn this off now because I don't need to cook no more of that. But anyway, I don't know if you get the hang of this, but just to see if I can show it to you. See? The egg doesn't stick. <laughs> well, every time you cook eggs, you're going to end up with a little bit of stuff in there. I don't know why that is, but it's just uh, the nature of the beast, I guess. But the way you, I think you get more stuff with scrambled eggs than you do with, uh, with fried eggs. Cheese, please. OK. 
Okay, that's done there. Let me slide this egg over here. Take this off of here. Plop it on there. See? Nice, nice golden brown. That's what I like about the mayonnaise. I think the mayonnaise does a little better than the, than the butter. Okay, I'm going to go enjoy my little sandwich here. And when we get done, we'll be moving over to that side of the kitchen to the sink. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, here you can see these are your friends when you're cleaning. You got no lint paper towel, shop towel, a regular towel. You got your brush. This is your real friend right here. This is a lodge scraper. Okay, that clean helps clean the pan. This is I this is another thing I like is chain mail. Just like regular old chain mail. You see those are medieval guys in the movies wear. <laughs> And then you got your Crisco. That's the only reason I got this big can. It seemed better deal than getting a little can. Okay, let me get the pots going. Okay, one other safety tip is always treat your pan like it's hot, even if it's not. Grab it with a mitt. That way you don't never get burned. Okay, so if you can see in the bottom of there, it's got a little bit of residue. So what I do first is I take the uh, pan and I wipe it out with a paper towel. Now, if it was just me, I would probably just leave this after I wipe this out with, like that. It's pretty much ready to use again. It's got a coat of oil on there from the butter and the oil. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. You can just do that. But because I'm doing this for a training thing, we're going to wash it like I normally do. Okay, they tell you you can't use soap. I use soap with just a little bit, not much. Uh, now, if your pan's hot, always make sure you turn the water on first and make your water uh, a little warm. Not really, you don't have to get it hot, hot, but it should be warm, okay? There you go, it's warm enough. All right. So, what I do is I put a little soap on my hand. And right into the pan, dust it. Okay, just don't make too much mess. Now you can take your brush and go around the pot, or the pan, whatever you want to call it, skillet. I'm getting in the hat and stay in pot for all of them. Now, if you have some stuff that's really stuck on, that's where you can take this and you scrape along the bottom. This curve here gets right into the curve of the pan. Okay, so you, there's nothing can hide from this little devil. When they come up with this lodge, they did a good job. Now, if there's really stuck on stuff, take your chain mail, drop it in the bottom, and then hit it with your brush so it makes it a little easier. And then squash it around. And that usually sticks to my, my brush, but today, because I'm showing you, it ain't going to do that. My daughter can attest to that. I showed her once, Stephanie. Okay? And then you just, uh, use your rag there, but anyway, now you just rinse. It's still a little warm, not too bad, but I'm, you know, practice what you preach, right? <laughs> I generally put that on all the time. I have a pair of, uh, I know it's going to sound funny, but welding gloves. But when I'm putting these in the oven and baking them, uh, burning your hands for sure. But anyway, then you dry it out as much as you can. All the way around. And as you can see, this is the pan that I originally showed you guys, my Rosie the Riveter pan, okay? It's what I used on that other video with the first cook of eggs. Then what you do is, you put it on the stove, over like medium. What you're trying to do is dry out all the moisture. So I'm putting mine on about four. 
okay? Anyway, while that's drying, I'm gonna take this one over there. I notice I got my paper towel in my hand. Again, you can see that there's stuff stuck on the bottom, a little bit the cheese that got escaped from my sandwiches, right? See, that's a little crusty. But remember, I didn't put no uh, no additional grease in here, and I did that for two reasons. One, to make there's grease in the mayonnaise. Two, I wanted to show you exactly how this works. If you get stuck on stuff, all right? Take your brush. Now there's a piece of cheese still stuck there. So what I do is take my chain now and your brush. And you just keep brushing it. The thing with the chain mail is not gonna hurt the pan, it's because all the edges on the chain mail is rounded up. There's nothing sharp that can gouge into the cast iron, okay? Okay, that's pretty good. Rinse. And I did that with straight water on the counter. I didn't really put no grease in there. But, uh, you'll hear a lot of people say, don't put soap in your pan. But if you've got a well-seasoned pan, it can handle soap. But anyway, I'll show you. See here? No, no more residue of anything. I'm going to dry this out. I'm going to go to the stove now and show you how to season it when you get done. Okay? All right, let's go. Turn this up, bring this over there. Okay, I don't know if you can really see it, but this, well, look, there's no moisture in there. And the pan is pretty warm. So what you do is, you take a little dab of Crisco, not a lot, well, whatever oil you like, you can use canola oil, you can, whatever, oh, you can use olive oil, vegetable oil. I happen to, when I learned how to do this, they, everybody, everybody said they swore by uh, Crisco. So that's why you use just a little dab here, a little dab there, and you just keep working it in. And you Make sure you cut, cut, uh, coat everything with a light coat, see, just like that. See a light coat, nothing's dripping. Flip it over. Rub that in just real thin. Then you, what I do on the stove top, I just leave it set until it starts to smoke. Once it smokes, that means it's cooking. When I mean cooking, the oil is actually getting heated up into the pores of the metal and it's polymerizing. And that's what gives you your nonstick surface. Sometimes that'll take a little bit. But anyway, it, it doesn't take much to clean the pans. And once you do this, and you don't have to do it every single time, um, especially if you, like, like when I cleaned it out after the eggs, there was really nothing in there, but it was still having some residue of the butter and the oil. And that's basically what you did. You cooked in it, so it's in the pores, and you just took it out. I'm just showing you how to, like if you was to cook a steak, okay, uh, or something of that nature that's st stuff stuck to the bottom, fish. Uh, but anyway, that's how you clean it. And then once you wash it, and generally speaking, you'll hear a lot of people say just wash it in water. You don't need soap. Like I said, if you have if this thing's properly seasoned, it'll take a little soap. You don't gotta flood it out, and don't use a, a scrubby pad if you can help it. You know, you can use one of these sponges. If you like it, one of these here sponges that has the the Scotch Brite on one side and the sponge on the other. That'll work too. I know you guys really can't see this, but it is starting to smoke slightly. But that's how you do it. You just basically put a light coat on, 
And on top of the stove, once you see, I don't know if you can see the smoke, but it, it's smoking a little. I'm going to wait and see if I can show you guys a really good waft of smoke. <laughs> I tell you, if you ever decide to do the oven cleaning method, which I'm going to show you in another video, sometimes you got to turn on the exhaust fan because it gets smoky. Can you, I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually smoking a decent amount. All right, well, anyway, then that's when I turn this off. Take my no lint uh, shop towel. It's a paper towel, basically, but it doesn't, doesn't leave any residue of the lint. And while it's still hot, I brush it, I mean, wipe it out. And that's what you're left with. You see the smoke? That's from the bottom of the pan. Look, Rosie never felt so good. <laughs> All right, so that's how you do it, okay? And then I put it off to the side. Okay, we'll do this other pan first. I gotta go. Okay, next up is my buffalo pan. I don't know if you can see that pretty good. But it's embossed with a bison on the back, okay? All right, now I'm gonna dry this one out. And once it's dry, we're gonna see, uh, season it or re-season it the same way. It only takes a couple minutes, you know. <laughs> if you want it to be, uh, you know, the thing is, it doesn't get rusty, it doesn't won't get that beat up as long as you keep it seasoned. And you, you know, when you're dead, you know, hopefully it goes to somebody else in your family and they can use it. You know, frying pans can probably tell you a lot of stories about people cooking. <laughs> like especially if you go out collecting them, pans that are over a hundred years old. And Penny and I have got a couple like that, but you, know, you just wonder what did people cook back then? I don't know, I do. I <laughs> wonder. I was looking up food from the Depression, and you know, sometimes some of the meals they made pretty tasty, uh, but it was basic stuff, you know, potatoes and hot dogs, and they used to mix ketchup in it. Uh, they had bread pudding, which really was crackers and some cream, and you know, but they couldn't afford nothing back then. I know where this coronavirus is going, you know, uh, our unemployment rate is going sky high. And it's going to be like just like the Great Depression, I guess. I hope it don't get that bad. But if it does, don't worry. I'm, I'm going to start cooking some, uh, some of those type meals just to show what they are and what they taste like. But anyway, same as before, once the pan gets warmed up, water's already out of there. Grease it up. Just like the other one, just grease it up, grease it up. Don't put too much because you don't want it for, uh, puddling nowhere, especially when it's cooking. That's what different about cook doing this here on the stove top than in the oven. In the oven, you actually turn the pan upside down. Okay. I'm going to show you something else. Don't freak out, but I'm going to get them wet and all this off of here. Sometimes your, your rag will look a little dirty like that. What that is is the seasoning that's on there. As you're rubbing some of it, especially putting a new coat on, that, that's what happens to your rag, but it's not bad. Don't think it, you're gonna, it ain't gonna kill you, that's for sure. Uh, but anyway, that's basically it for that. I just wait for it to start smoking. And then we're, we're done. <laughs> I know this may have been a little bit long of a video, but we killed two birds at one stone. This is what I wanted to show you guys on the first video, but ran out of time. <coughs> and the thing on my other camera, the video, the phone, it, it, 
the battery keeps dying at 65%. So I got this other phone now, the one I used to have, and it's holding up good, not even plugged in, and it's not even halfway. All right, can you see the smoke maybe? I don't know, but it's, it's actually smoking pretty good. Turn it off, and again, same thing as before, we wipe it down. We don't want no excess oil sitting or grease sitting there with while it's sitting, minding its own business till it gets time to cook again, see? Because that's when the pans become uh, sticky and gooey, and you don't want that. Okay, so that'll be that. And there's my little bison, happy little camper now. He's all greased up and ready to go. And like I said, always treat these things like they're hot. And hopefully you won't never get burned. But always treat it like it's hot. Have a potholder. <laughs> okay, like I said in the beginning of the video, if you guys will uh, do me a favor, and uh, right now this is called Dan, Cooking with Mr. Dan. It was just Dan Wills. But uh, I'd like you all to go back, and if you have subscribed, please resubscribe. If you haven't, subscribe please do so click the like button the share button and the ding ding button you know for when I put out a new video you'll get a message and that way you can watch it if you want I appreciate everything hope you guys learned something I'm still learning especially with this YouTube thing but anyway I'll see you next time